Do you know what they call alternative medicine that's been proven to work? Medicine. Welcome to the Holistic Healing Collective Podcast, a show about energy healing, holistic, and plant medicine. Our passion is healing on all levels. You'll hear guests from doctors, yoga teachers, energy healers, researchers, coaches, and real people who've recovered from serious debilitating health conditions, getting to the root of the problem and solving it. And this is not medical advice. Welcome to the Holistic Healing Collective Podcast. And now your host, William Dickinson. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Holistic Healing Collective podcast. Today, we are joined by Teresa, Teresa Bragg, and she is the founder and creator of Unstuck Your Life, which I think is a very, very nice name. Unstuck Your Life is designed as a highly intuitive coaching program, and Teresa has extra sensory abilities. So I'm very interested to learn a little bit more about that. That's, that's definitely in my area of interest. She lives in Berlin, is 24 years old, and is striving for more empowerment and connectedness in this world, which I would also advocate for, so hence she's here. So thanks for coming, Teresa. Um, I would, I'd like to ask you, how did you get into this, and what, what drew you towards this, this mission, this direction? Mm, yeah, thank you so much for having me here. I'm, I'm well, so excited and also a little bit nervous, but I'm, yeah, I'm really joyful to be here. Um, yeah, so how did I get into this? Basically, um, I would have to take you a couple of years back because that's where I started. I think about six years ago, I had like my first big spiritual awakening, you know, and I yeah, found myself wanting to understand myself on a deeper level and really understand why I am the way I am. So that kind of led me to, uh, for example, Teal Swan's work. I'm, I'm sure many of you guys have heard of her at least because she's, yeah very known for her work when it comes to resolving trauma and also unstuck in your life, I guess, and really creating what you want and having the relationships that you desire to have. Um, so I just basically found myself really intrigued by her work because it really spoke to me, like with the depth that she's uh, having. I think she's one of the deepest human beings on this planet. Um, so I felt really drawn and I actually ended up going to a couple of her events in different countries. I was traveling around and I just really found myself immersing full on for a couple of years just into like the daily practice of being present with myself and coming to understand why my life is the way it is um, and I think this is often where you know most people don't really have the awareness they don't really know like they just think like life is just something that happens to you um, but I really think now that actually life is something that we are also um, in control of to a certain degree um, and that that's really where like my passion lies is, is lies in is to make people aware again you know of the control that they do have and that really things are like if things are inside of them it's most likely going to be mirrored outside and there is so much power there that most people aren't aware of um so that's really what i do now and that's really what i've been going through in the last years is like finding out why my life is the way it is and taking back my power yeah so, so how would you say you get into this because obviously now you're working on the process of un unsticking your life means mm -hmm. you first have to become aware that you're actually stuck. Yes. How did you go about that? And how would you suggest other people might become aware that they're a little bit stuck? Mm, that's a good question. I think it takes actually like the awareness. Cause I think most people are kind of numb to the fact that they're stuck. You know, most people are just think, well, that's just life is, you know, like you're, you're supposed to work a job you don't like. You're supposed to be in a relationship that's mediocre. You're supposed to just make, an okay amount of money and that's that's the way it's supposed to be i think there's this tolerance to, towards mediocrity i think it's called right mm -hmm. mediocrity um so i think it actually takes like some awareness or some event in people's lives like make them aware of their own stuckness and most like most likely people aren't gonna get there because it takes awareness to actually see the the stuckness um yeah so i don't know if that answers the question i think it's just like i think it's like People, when they have like a spiritual awakening, they see that there is so much more out there and that life can actually be something beautiful and that it's not just something out of our control. And we just have to accept, you know, things being shitty and painful and staying that way. I think there is actually like in power and us creating what we want. Um, but it takes a certain degree of consciousness to, to really believe that. Yeah. 
So would you say that this is a, a very polar thing or would you say that there's, it's, it's analog? Would you say it's analog or digital? So it's like you're either stuck or you're unstuck or you can kind of be like in a spectrum in the middle. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely a spectrum. I think some people, you know, it just really depends on people's traumas and people's beliefs that hold them back and like their life experience, their pre-birth intention. Like there's so much that goes into why people are stuck and how stuck they are. Um, but I really think there's like, um, it really goes in both directions. Like some people are, you know, they don't have to be super aware, but they still can manifest the things that they want. And then there are other people who are super aware and they've done a lot of work, but still they find themselves so miserable and so stuck and so isolated and so unhappy. So I really feel like it's very individual, actually. And that's something like something that takes actual time and presence, understanding like why you are the way you are and why are you at, like where why are you at where you're at, basically, you know, to really understand all the different, um, I guess, like components that that play into that. So would you yeah. say that a good indicator that you're maybe a little bit stuck is that you're experiencing dissatisfaction with the life mm -hmm. you're currently living? Yes, 100%. Okay. That's, um, that's it. Yeah. Is that is that what happened in your case? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I'm I think I actually, I think this is maybe something maybe a bit unique about me. I've always felt like the knowing, like since I'm a child that there's more to life. Like I feel like it was always like deep inside of me. And that's why I also decided never to study, even though I had a really good um, like uh, high school education. I have, could have gone to many amazing universities. I have like a wealthy dad. So he could, like, I really could have chosen that path. You know, I could have had an easy life and just do it the way people told me and yeah, that could have been it. But I always felt like, no, there is more to it. Like, I'm not supposed to go this path. I'm not supposed to just live the normal mediocre mm -hmm. life and just do some job I don't feel good about. And yeah, choose that path. So I always felt like, no, there's more, really. That's actually kind of relatable for me because mm -hmm. though I wasn't in a particularly strong financial position, I did still have the opportunity to go to university. And it was just something that really didn't feel right to me. And everyone around mm -hmm. me was doing it. And it, I couldn't even explain it with, with, with logic or rationality. It just did not feel right. And yes. it didn't, didn't go that way. Mm. And then lots of stuff conspired in my life. And, and here we are. But yes. there, was, there, was that, there was that deep feeling that mm -hmm. it just wasn't the right thing. So you'd say yes. you had the same experience. Yes, yes. And I'm glad that you're just sharing this because I think that's what it takes. It takes that like knowing inside of you, like there's more out there. Like there is mm -hmm. like this intuition, this feeling of, I, I believe that there is more to life than just what we're being told. Yeah. I feel like that's, that has a very empowered energy to it though. It's like, mm -hmm. you're telling me that this is all there is, but I believe there's something else. I think in my case, it wasn't, there wasn't so much of an empowered energy to it. It was, mm -hmm. this just doesn't feel right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It was like, there's this uncertainty mm -hmm. that this isn't the right direction, but mm -hmm. it's not that I know there's something more. I just know that this isn't right. Yeah. So you feel Me like you, you had that clarity, mm -hmm. even initially, you were like, I know this isn't right. And I know there's something more and I know there's something more out there. Yes, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. But I also really understand where you're coming from. And mm -hmm. I think that's what most people are going through, which mm -hmm. is this process of like, for example, when you have like a physical disease, right? Like you go to hospital and then they don't fix it. And then you go to another doctor and you do this. And then at some point you end up in this place of pure desperation, not knowing mm -hmm. what to do. And all you know is just, this doesn't feel right. Like there needs to be another way. Like mm -hmm. this can't be it. Like I'm, I'm just supposed to die of cancer. And like, that's it now. Like that's, that, that was my life, you know? And I think there are some people who are, um, which is super valid. I'm not saying to offend any of people who are just believing this. Um, but I feel like there are some people who are, you know, just accepting that truth. And then other people are like, this doesn't feel right. Like this is not, in in alignment with mm -hmm. my internal guidance system or my internal mm -hmm. knowing or yeah so with that with that said this internal guidance system so mm -hmm. would you say that this is like this this feeling it's like this isn't right this is right go in this direction don't go in this direction how can we learn to trust this sort of internal guidance system mm -hmm. more especially when when we look at it through this lens of understanding trauma, a lot of the time our guidance mm -hmm. system has actually been distorted and warped and yes. it doesn't point us at actually where we want to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good question. I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, I think it's really becoming like really, truly present with yourself, you know, because often people aren't present and then they make decisions and then they end up, you know, not really being in alignment with them. So I feel like before you do anything, um, 
I mean, yeah, as much as you can, at least. I would really like ask people to like sit down and just be present with them and just feel into like, where is this desire coming from right now? Where is this need coming from? Like what part of me is feeling this way right now? And sometimes, as you said, like they can, these feelings can come from very traumatized parts in us. Um, yeah. So it's really like a matter of being present and coming to understand where our desires and uh, like, yeah, I guess the inner guidance is coming from because as you said it can sometimes be a bit messed up with you know for example like if you were a child and you've been um what's it called Indoct indoctrinated yeah, i yes. guess that's the word indoctrinated um with the belief that you have to work really hard to be worthy you know of love then obviously that's going to really much affect you when you make the decisions in the future You're probably going to be somebody who chooses like a uh, very, you know, high career and somebody who aims to work a lot. Um, and that probably isn't really, I mean, it could be like, it could be that you're just naturally like a very competitive uh, and success loving person, but it could also just be something that you had to take on when you were little. So really to find out if this is something authentic or if this is something that's coming out of a trauma um, or out of like a coping mechanism, it really is important to actually do the work and sit down and understand where is this coming from? Yeah. So that sounds really great. And I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm completely in agreement with what you said. But how do you do it? <laughs> yeah, how do you do it? Well, I think there are many, many ways of how you can do this. I don't think there's just one way. And mm -hmm. um, how I do it personally is just, as I said, really sitting down and becoming present. And sometimes that takes, you know, like somebody else to be present with you because, yeah, it's hard to see ourselves mm -hmm. clearly um, when it's just ourselves. So it's nice to have a mirror, somebody who can really be there unconditionally present. Um, yeah, and what I like to do is like something that's called parts work or just really becoming a, like connected to the part in you that has those desires or feelings and just really see it as if it's another person. So for example, for me, um, like let's say I want to, I don't know, have a certain career or like do something, create something. I'm going to sit down and just visualize that part of me that wants that. And I'm going to really like really step out of it and just really see this part as if it's a different person. And in that moment to me, usually we, like I, I get to see myself much more clearly because I can see myself more from the outside. And then I see, okay, there's this part of me that really wants to have this strong career. Okay, where is this coming from? How old is this part? How does this part feel? Oh, this part feels really depressed and alone and really unhappy. Um, okay, and how long has she felt this way? Oh, since her childhood. So maybe I should need, like, need to attend to that first and then I can see if this drive for a career is still in alignment with my actual needs. Because we often, okay. yeah, like we often think that we want something, but it's not really what we want. We want, mm -hmm. we want something uh, like a feeling that's that thing is representing. So yeah. what you're saying is from this, from this concept of looking at this as a parts perspective, instead of mm -hmm. us being this one cohesive, like I'm William and you're Teresa, we're actually like a yeah. kind of like a community of lots of yeah. different little, little versions of ourselves in, inside. Yes. Yes. And what you're what you're saying with this is there's like a part one of these one of these parts that has a need it needs to be loved it needs to be cared for it needs to mm -hmm. be protected or it, need, it needs something and it believes or it perceives that the best way for it to get that is for you to do the thing to go for that career to mm -hmm. do that thing in your relationship to do mm -hmm. whatever it is that you're doing so in essence what you're trying to do is figure out where the motivation behind the behavior is coming from figure out yeah. what part is doing that and what that part mm -hmm. actually needs and then mm -hmm. more effectively directly giving that yes. part exactly what it needs yes and then if that desire to pursue the thing that you wanted to do externally is still present it's mm -hmm. more of a, an in alignment thing than a trauma response thing yes yes exactly and i'm really glad that you're like everything you just said like uh yeah it's the perfect explanation and um, I don't know. I forgot what I was just going to say. Um, let me see. Mm. I think what would be really interesting mm -hmm. would be is if you could help us see how this has actually taken place mm -hmm. in your life. If you wouldn't mind sharing a personal mm -hmm. experience with a part that you had that you mm -hmm. were able to actively meet its need and how that changed how you were behaving. Mm -hmm. That would be very interesting for me. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'll definitely, I'll, I need to think about it for just a second. Um, sure. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, I just wanted to add, um, just before I answer that question, just wanted to add something else because I feel like um, we need to, like, as I said, become really present with ourselves and with our needs and desires and all the things that we're doing every day and really understand where it's coming from so we actually know if, whether it's in alignment with what we really want. Otherwise, we're just this, um, you know, like this robot, robot, robot that is just uh, moving forward in life, but it's coming out of this um, unawareness, like, oh, I need to do this. I want to do this career, but it's not really connected to our true needs usually. And it's really important to become really aware and present so we can actually meet those needs directly, as you mm -hmm. said, and that will really affect our lives because it's going to make it so much better. You know, like you don't have to go do this crazy career if all you want is just to be loved, you know, then just go and have people who love you. Like, mm -hmm. like it makes life so much more easy and so much more rich. We don't have to do anything we don't want to do. We really get to have our needs met directly and Often we can't do that unless we come present with what's keeping us away that's, from having these needs met. Would you yeah. say that this happens because we kind of intuitively know how to get our needs met directly when we're young, mm -hmm. but our caregivers or the people that provide those needs will not provide them unless we do something first. Yes. So our instinct now is to do that behavior to receive what it is that we want, because that's how we've sort of been trained or conditioned yeah. to understand that's how we get it. Yes, exactly. Very yeah. interesting. That's one of Very many ways how uh, how life has gotten really hard for us because we can go directly for what we want. We can't have our de de mm -hmm. de desires directly met. We always need to go about it and do something. And often that's not really in alignment mm -hmm. with us. But that was like a coping strategy from childhood. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually actually a very subtle form of manipulation as well because it's mm -hmm. not actually a genuine action. You're doing it because you want something or and yeah. you have an ulterior motive. Very yes. interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Yes. And there are so many ways <laughs> we are all doing this everybody yeah. that's okay yes um so you basically asked me about like what you know what i did in my life mm -hmm. um i think there are so many examples that's why yes. it's hard for me to you know they're like every yeah. day there's something yeah so, um so for example i'm just gonna go with the example of me deciding against university right like not going mm -hmm. which is very unlikely like my friend group and like every young person here in Germany at least most likely is going to go and go to university mm -hmm. or do some something around like an education and who am I to not do any of that and just be like nah hands off like I'll go and travel and I'll find my purpose in another way and you know fuck that basically um I really had that strong energy and I really like made me question myself and I had to go through all of these layers of who is this part of me that doesn't want to go to school is that a part that's avoiding responsibility? Like my mom told me, is that a part that doesn't want to grow up? You know, is that a part of me that feels um, like she's just, I don't know, gonna, like she doesn't have to um, sustain herself and she can just rely on her parents. I mean, those were all like the reflections that were coming from the outset and really made me question, like, is this a good decision? Am I ruining my future by not learning something? You know, like, am I, my mom told me, you're going to be 30 pregnant and then you're going to knock on my door and ask me to like uh, shelter you right so that's kind of the fear that I was induced with mm -hmm. and it took a while like years for me to really become present with myself and all these parts of me that were activated and understand who which part is who and what what are the underlying intentions and needs and like desires and it really took a time to really become present but I think now I'm at the place where I realized no it was actually in alignment with me to not do that because I knew that there was another path and I am yeah, I'm not regretting it so far, but it was definitely a journey and it took time and many processes of really understanding if this is in alignment with me or not. So it's not yeah. something that you just sat down, had one session and just no. came to that insight. It was an organic process over mm -hmm. what sort of time span are we talking here? Um, like two years, probably, or okay. three years, probably three years. Yeah. So it, it yeah. takes as long as it takes. It does. It does. And I'm not saying this to like discourage anybody because I really believe that one session can also really change certain yes. things, but sometimes, you know, we like to just get it done and then yeah, have this idea of like one time healing, but it's also a process and it's really about becoming present with yourself and connected enough to know if something is, is in alignment with you or not. Yeah. And yeah. I would actually say that even those one time healing experiences, I had a very, very powerful one time mm -hmm. healing experience where in the span of 24 hours i went from being able to eat six safe foods to being able to eat anything and everything that i mm -hmm. wanted without limitation wow. which was wow. remarkable but mm -hmm. and it looks like oh i did it in 24 hours i did it really quick it's like actually there were five years of grueling integration awareness trauma healing 
mm-hmm. learning new tools, techniques, how to communicate with my body that led up to that event. So it looks mm-hmm. like it happened exactly. for 24 hours, but it was actually yes. five years of effort. And then all of a sudden, just like that, things things changed. So yes. I would say even in those spontaneous healings, there's usually still a lot of groundwork that goes into that. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I'm glad that you said that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. even if you aren't seeing the exact result that you want it doesn't mean that it, it can't literally just be like one day around the corner you know the yeah. day before that that happened to me i would never have perceived how my life would have changed and then yes. the day after that i'm like okay what are the rules now this is a completely different reality that i'm yeah. living in it doesn't make any sense i don't understand it so it was a life-changing experience it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's really cool so it, it does take time but it can happen really quickly if you're if you're yes. in, the, in the work Yes, 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 exactly. I think what's most important is just building this relationship to yourself, you know, that which is the healing like journey to me is like really understanding yourself and learning to love yourself and be present and really Mm -hmm. be connected to yourself and no matter what you're feeling. And then I think there's a lot possible in those sessions, you know, you can really dive deep and have those miracle healing sessions as Mm -hmm. you were describing. Um, Yeah. So would you say that the word healing is almost synonymous with the word awareness? Um, well, I do think there's a difference, but okay. in a way, yes. Yeah. Okay. Because awareness is healing. Yes. Okay. But, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But healing isn't awareness. Um, I think healing, like awareness is a component of healing, okay. but there is more to healing than just awareness. Yes. Okay. Because healing is also action. Okay. Healing is I also agree. receiving. Like there's so much that goes into what can be healing for an individual in a certain circumstance. So it's, First is awareness that always sparks the healing, but there are also things that need to be followed up than just awareness, I believe. Very interesting. Yeah. But I would actually, I'd, I'd, I'd maybe counterpose that by saying, mm-hmm. if you can, can have, I would say that when you're in alignment and mm-hmm. the action that you need to take feels so obvious and effortlessly good, mm-hmm. it doesn't really honestly take that much effort to do. You yeah. know, it's really quite easy. So if you can become so aware as to why you're having problems moving forward, mm-hmm. The effort that you need to put in is magnificently small. Yes. Yes, totally. Yeah. But there does still need to be effort. You are you are right. I agree. That's and it. I'm not saying effort. I'm just saying action. Like because to me, action doesn't have to be effort, you know, because okay. like it can just be easy action. Okay. Very interesting. That's yeah. very, very cool. Very cool. Mm-hmm. I really like this this concept that I'm seeing more of detaching the amount of effort that's input into something with the amount of outcome that you get yes are you mm-hmm. are you feeling that kind of thing mm-hmm. happening yourself 100 percent. like i've got actually very strong experience with that very certain um pattern you know of like pushing hard and putting in the effort i was actually i think two years ago or like a year and a half ago i was uh, staying somewhere in sweden i was one of the hardest times of my life because i was very close to burnout i was feeling very depleted very very stuck like extremely stuck one of the most stuck moments of my life and I was volunteering I was working hard I did, almost didn't make any money I had no clients coming and I felt so deprived of everything I was a very hard experience for me and at some point I think I reached my limit and I just completely crashed and I realized like I can't keep doing this like my body's gonna break fall apart at some point like if I keep pushing myself this way um, and then I realized that like my whole life was build around this concept of I have to work hard. I have to suffer to, to be worthy of existing. I know that sounds like very, very strong, but I really believe that that's something that most people suffer from is this belief that you have to uh, suffer and like push hard and go beyond your energy and like beyond your limits to uh, be allowed to exist or to be allowed to receive what you want. I feel like it has like a lot to do with like low self-worth, which I'm also so passionate talking about because I think this is one of the most life-changing things is like addressing low self-worth and healing that because it can really change whether you're like capable of receiving effortlessly or whether you have to work hard. And like since I did that, like my life changed fully, like so much. So I really yeah. believe in that effortless way of being. So for anyone listening, how would they be able to determine if they actually have low self-worth? They may not be mm-hmm. identified with knowing that that's actually what they believe about themselves yes. how would they yeah, become aware I, yeah that's a good question i think there are many things that like um fall like that up yeah that can play up play out in like if you have low self-worth mm-hmm. many many things but for example like one of them would be like you have to work really hard or like you always have to go beyond your limits just to have your basic needs met you know it's this 
if you feel like life is hard, you probably have those self-worth mm. because if you have high self-worth, you like, you feel like life is easy and things are coming to you and life is working for you because it loves you. And if you feel like life is hard, it's just one pain after the other. You most likely are somebody who believes that that's what they deserve. So I really feel like that's a really big one. Obviously, if you find yourself, you know, chronically in like really painful relationships, that's also a really big um, sign to me that there's most likely a low self-worth inside, like a part that feels like it's not good enough and it's not worthy enough of receiving love. Um, yes. So would you say you now identify with having a high self-worth or higher than it was previously? Mm -hmm. Yes, 100%. I wouldn't say like, I really feel like self-worth is something that is, you know, kind of continues. Like there are many layers and I feel mm -hmm. like I've like peeled off like a bunch of layers. Mm -hmm. So I really feel very much shifted now, like for sure. Mm -hmm. So much. And it has, as I said, like changed everything. Cause there's this, like there are two different realities we can live in. We can live in this reality of, I have to work hard. I have to fix myself. I have to heal. I have to do all of these things. I, like I have to go beyond my limits. As I said, I, I have to suffer and that's what life is and that's what I deserve, you know, or we can live in this energy of like, I'm so worthy. My inner child is so, so fucking worthy of everything that she or he or whatever desires. Um, I really feel this like, um, yeah, just like this radiance. I feel this knowing that I'm here to experience what I, what I want to experience. And when we're in that state of that embodiment of worthiness, things can come to us, you know, and we, we don't have to do anything. We can just receive the same as a baby receives, you know, like the baby doesn't have to do anything. It's just like uh, ideally, you know, being taken care by the parents and nurtured and loved and kissed and cuddled and it doesn't have to do anything. Um, yeah. So I, I really love the law of attraction and I, I believe in it and I agree with it, mm -hmm. but I feel like it can be really hard for mm -hmm. people that aren't aware of it to, to sort of like to be able to grasp. Is there mm -hmm. any way you could help people break it down? Like how, when we change these perceptions and beliefs that we have, how this mm -hmm. actually affects us tangibly, like how we actually change our behaviors, for mm -hmm. example. Yes, that's a really good question. I also, actually, I struggle with explaining this because I feel like it's something so complex and yes. I'm sometimes at a loss of words, even though I love to talk about this, but I'm like, oh, how do I explain this? Because we could like talk about this for, you know, like mm -hmm. a million years, like there's yeah. so much to say. Um, so I really like, really believe that, yeah, uh, the inside is being mirrored in the external world, basically, you know, so whatever is inside of me is also on the outside. And if I change the inside, I'm also changing the outside. Um, so yeah, it's a good question. I have to feel into this for a second okay. to find a good example. Um, yeah, for example, I think when we have beliefs, we always look for proof, right? Like if I have the belief, life is hard, I have to work hard, otherwise everything will fall apart then that's gonna that's also what i'm like i'm subconsciously looking proof for that belief mm -hmm. you know and if i change my belief if i like for example i had that experience where i realized okay holding on to that belief that i have to suffer to exist is not helping me anymore like it's actually hurting me and it's almost making me die like that's how i mm -hmm. felt um and when i changed that belief and i realized like no this is not in alignment with me anymore like i want to believe that life can be easy all of a sudden I looked for proof, you know, it's like really about being open to receive the proof for your beliefs. So I found myself wanting to see, I believe that there is another way. So I'm going to go and find that proof. I'm going to find people online that can show me that it's possible to live life that's effortless, you know? And I think by that, having that willingness, I think I really shifted my experience because I was looking for a different experience. I was looking for a different proof and I received that. Um, so I hope that makes sense. I don't know if that's yes, clear enough. I get, um, I get okay. it. I just think it's a bit difficult because mm -hmm. you say you just have to change what you believe. Yes. It's really well, hard to do yeah. that when you're basing your belief off of all of your experiences. Up yes. To this point. So how, yes. Do you, well, that's, how do you do yes. that? Yes. Well, we do that with, um, again, becoming present. And like, if I, if I had somebody in a session and they were like, I have this really painful belief, I want to change it. Then we can just say that we want to change it. You know, we have to really understand where this is actually coming from and really be with that. And for example, for me, in that case, in my own experience was I was all of a sudden confronted with this little girl in me who always had to work past her limits, who was just here to work, who was just here to be used. I know this sounds really extreme, but I'm just expressing this was what was really going on. And when I saw this part in me and how much she was suffering and how much she was alone and unloved and how much she was just here to, yeah, 
work basically um, and like to me there was no more question that that's that's okay like when I saw that when I actually became aware of the pain that's inside of me and really was feeling it and like listening to it and seeing it clearly like there was no more question for me to hold on to that belief because I could mm -hmm. see how out of alignment was with me mm -hmm. and in that moment I had no more doubt like I was like no this is not true this can't be true because this is causing me so much pain so I think in order to change our beliefs we really need to become aware of the pain that's hiding underneath those beliefs and how much like a struggle this is causing us I I really like that answer and I, mm -hmm. I can understand exactly what you're saying but I feel like I am also highly intuitive and I can really mm -hmm. get that. So for someone that maybe isn't so in tune mm -hmm. with their body, maybe isn't so intuitive, if they say, for example, they feel like they don't have enough money yeah. and they've never had enough money at any point in their lives, mm -hmm. like they don't, they don't currently perceive that they've had enough. They always feel like they don't have enough. And now they're in a position where they have a bill coming up, they need to pay and they don't have mm -hmm. enough. How do yeah. they change that belief? Mm -hmm. well I would I think it takes a lot of compassion and like validation for first just be like this is okay like yeah it makes so much sense that you feel this way like you know because mm -hmm. there are like really painful feelings mm -hmm. coming around like when you don't have it's money really and you need to pay it's very scary it's really intense so I, if I had somebody sitting in front of me with that experience right now I'd be like first of all like really validating it not trying to change it just being there with it and accepting like this is your experience and I can really understand how painful and how stressful mm -hmm. and how scary this is I think that's always the first step. And then I would really, you know, if this person is open and wanting to have a different experience, I would ask them, so how did you grow up? Like, what was your relationship with money when you were little? How was, you know, how were the people around you treating money? How were your parents viewing money? How, how abundant did you feel? Did you feel super restricted and having your desires met? And I would really connect that person to their childhood experience where those limiting beliefs are always coming from. And I think just by sharing, you know, I think people can easily, like more easily at least tap into the pain that's around. Because the thing is, we're all so, I don't know if I'm allowed to say fuck, but I would say like, we're all yeah, so perfect. fucking numb. Like we're so numb to our own suffering. We think it's normal to not have money. We think it's normal to feel unhealthy. We think it's normal to feel unloved. We think it's normal to have low self-worth. It's not normal. It's really not normal. And if I had somebody sitting in front of me with this belief, I would tell him it's not normal. This is really, really painful. And I think by me being in that energy of like, hey, this is not okay. Like you're suffering right now. You're in so much like distress all the time. This is not okay. I think we can, I, with that energy, I can help that person to also tap into more of um, the person's own pain and suffering. And by doing that, we can see, okay, there's almost so much pain. This can't be true. This pain is not in alignment. Whenever there's emotional pain, it's not in alignment with our emotional well-being. So in, in, in this, is this sort of like the art of helping them realize that this isn't actually a belief that's theirs. It's yeah. not true for them. Yeah. It's actually something that they picked up or they've been yes. programmed. Yes. Yeah. It's something that they experienced when they were little, which was really traumatic and painful. And it needs to be super like seen and processed and healed. And then we, you know, we can, that through that process, the belief is going to be changed, but we can't just change it because we know we're not like a, like a, in a sense, like in a way we are like a computer, but we can't just, you know, um, just like a click, like a, the what's delete it called? Button. Yeah. Yeah. And delete the button and every, all our problems are gone. Like really, really need to understand where this is coming from in the first place and really attend to it. Yeah. Okay. And would you say that when this belief that we become aware this belief isn't actually our own. It's sort of like an imprinted belief. Mm -hmm. When we become aware of that, what fills its place? How do we find mm -hmm. our belief? Yes, yes. Well, that's that's a really good question. I think that's really you know unique, and it's just about finding a belief that feels right to you, like something that feels good to believe. Okay. So, for example, for me, or I guess most people would feel good to believe like money comes effortlessly. Money is easy to make. Think that those are like you can feel like just say it just mm -hmm. say your own like belief and just feel if it feels like a relief in the body or if it creates <laughs> tension it's still tension yeah. for me so i'm not all the way there yet <laughs> okay so, see, so there's probably something to yeah. that you know there's yeah. probably some resistance or fear I'm, so then i'm definitely getting that it's really interesting because i did have a lot of fear around money and from mm -hmm. my upbringing i can see how evident that was basically being yeah. in, on the poverty line with benefits from from my parents mm -hmm. like really at the lower levels of, of economic status and with them then spending a lot of that money on drugs and alcohol mm. and not much not much left for me so i can see how that imprinted on me and 
I actually started looking for evidence to the contrary that I don't have enough. And mm -hmm. I, I have come to an affirmation that feels really good for me, which is whenever I need something, it is always there. Mm -hmm. I, I never want or need for yeah. anything. I, I have always had enough at every point in my life. Mm -hmm. And that is the truth as I, I can currently yeah. perceive it. So that yeah. takes a lot of the fear and anxiety out of it. And it moves, mm -hmm. it, it feels, it doesn't feel like money comes to me effortlessly. It's mm -hmm. not quite that, that nice, strong positive, but mm -hmm. I can feel like I've got a very mild positive, which is I always mm -hmm. have enough. I'm yeah. always taken care of. And mm -hmm. I feel like I, I, I know like inside me, I can feel that drawn towards, I just, I'm effortlessly abundant. Like, yes. That's where I want to be. Yes. I and I know it's coming and I'm at peace with yeah. the process of getting there. I know the universe will unfold as it's, yeah. as it's supposed to. Yeah, that's beautiful. And it's so, you know, we are all hearing you share this. Like, I just feel like I really want to share this from my heart. Like we are all so worthy of having, like feeling like life is easy and things are coming to us and like, have like being able to have positive beliefs inside of us because there's like you know I've done this work with so many people now and by myself and friends and, like so many people and I've gotten to know so many people's internal worlds and there's a lot going on you know we are all in so much pain and the thing is as I said most of us don't even realize how many painful like really painful beliefs we have inside of us that constantly co-create our experience so yeah, wow. it's really nice to look at that and really resolve that and really be with that because it really can change people's lives like nothing else. I really believe that. Okay, yeah. so um, just as we start wrapping things up, I've got a couple of questions for you. Mm -hmm. So first of all, what is something that literally just about almost everyone listening to this would be able to do right now to mm -hmm. start improving their health or their life in mm -hmm. some way that is either completely free or very affordable and accessible to mm, that's an amazing question oh i love this okay well um i'm sure there's like a million of meditations you could do but you don't even have to do that i would just like really urge everybody to really sit down and visualize i know this can be hard because many people are blocked and they don't believe that they can have what they want but if you just, just for a moment, just allow yourself to drop all of that and just forget about all of those limited like beliefs and stuff, just sit down and just write down a list of everything that you desire. Like, how do you want your relationships to look and feel like? How do you want your career to go? Like, wh how much money do you want to make? What, what, what would you like to contribute to this world? How would you like to live your purpose? What do you want to create? You know, like really go wild. Like, what, what do you want to do? How do you want to wake up? Like, how do you want your life to look and feel like? I really want people to really write that down. I know this is something super basic, but many people don't get to that place because they, you know, they feel so powerless. Like, what's the point? And like, I'm not going to get it anyways, but really just do it. And I'm here to tell you that it's really, it's possible. All we have to do, and this is also hard work, but it's really possible in my experience, is to look at the parts and ask, that are resisting those things, you know, the parts in us that are not in alignment with those desires, the parts in us that are scared, that are pushing these desires and these experiences away subconsciously because something negative could happen. So in so, essence, it's less about figuring out how we go after the things we want, more about mm -hmm. understanding that those things that we want, as the feeling that we have that we want them is they're already magnetized yeah. towards yes. us. There's just yeah. parts of us that are pushing it away. Yes. And if yes. instead of exactly. we can just figure out where that resistance is coming from and yes. let that go, the things come mm -hmm. to us yes. very easily. Which, yes, exactly. So the first thing I would tell is just people write down a list of everything you desire and then some steps would follow up with that. But that's the first thing I would say. Yeah. That's a pretty hard yeah. step, I can imagine. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah, about doing I that. I actually want to go and do that now. So I'll probably do that. Yes, after amazing. Yeah. And then, you know, then there would be steps following up like, okay, what are these parts that are resisting? And there are things, certain processes you can do to unblock yourself and unstuck mm -hmm. yourself, which is what I do in my work. Cool. Yeah. So, say you get into uh, like an elevator, a lift mm -hmm. with a very influential member of the government that involved in policies that are set, mm. health, basically the future of the country. You have 30 mm. seconds until he reaches the floor that he's going to get off at. What do you mm -hmm. tell him to influence the health and the wellness of, of the nation? Mm -hmm. Oh God, I would, uh, maybe this is because I'm so biased, but I would just like, what the fuck? I would say like, what the fuck are you doing? Wake up, like wake the fuck up. This is not you. You are here for the people and people want to be free and healthy and want to live a happy life. And you're here to do this. Mm -hmm. This is your role. 
what are you doing like i would really probably come across as like this waking up like shaking him because like, <laughs> i believe that most of these people you know like they're not in their right mind and very disconnected so i would have to do something that really <laughs> wakes this person up probably I, th- i think it's probably important to preface that you're currently in germany right yeah so i understand there's quite a an interesting political situation mm-hmm. happening in germany yeah right yes Okay, yeah. cool. So it'd be quite a, a wake up kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Very cool. Okay. So it's been it's been lovely to have you. For mm-hmm. anybody that's interested in learning more about you, the work that you do, if they want to get in contact, if they just need help or just want to yeah. talk to you about anything, what's the best way that they can do that? How can they reach you? Yeah. So my website is called um, Unstuck Your Life. So it's www.unstuckyourlife.net. Um, I'm sure you're going to link that down below yeah, somewhere. Below. Um, so that's where people can just yeah find me and find like, uh, yeah, just find more about my work and just, yeah, read some reviews and just, yeah, just kind of see what I'm offering. I'm actually currently offering single sessions and also bundles, but what I'm really excited about right now is offering a one month container to people where I'm really like very much intentionally um, supporting them for the course of a whole month with like four sessions and the bonus sessions and homework and just different things playing into this where people can really unstuck their life and really work on their biggest hold bags and i'm going to be the one that's holding the container that really is going to make people aware of their biggest hold bags which are usually very subconscious so it really is amazing to have somebody who can dive into that and bring that up um So that's really something I'm so excited about. And I've got some open spots for the next month. So I would be, yeah, super excited if anybody feels called to work with me. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So thanks very much for, for coming. Uh, I'm, I'm really grateful that you've showered your information upon upon our audience. Uh, thanks mm. for all of your insight. And we would love to have you again sometime. So thank you. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye See bye. you in the next one. Bye. Mm-hmm. Bye bye. You've been listening to the Holistic Healing Collective with William Dickinson. Our passion is to heal with energy, holistic, and plant medicine using a science-based blend of mind, body, and spirit. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and we hope you've gotten some useful and practical information. Make sure to like, rate, and review, and tell a friend or two. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, find us on Facebook at the Holistic Healing Collective Podcast and support group. We'd love to see you. Take care, be well, and see you next time on the Holistic Healing Collective.